Hello, here is a look at four Antweight robots, three of which have spinning weapons. Uh, you have Sad Ken down here with the bar spinner, you have Hobgoblet with the egg beater spinner, and everyone remembers Reloader with the lifting arm. I'm going to start off by focusing on the walking robot with the large striking saw blade called Shakma. As Shakma is a walking robot, it gets a weight bonus, though it still has to fit in the 4-inch cube, it can weigh up to 225 grams. Uh, the rules for uh, UK and weights are quite lenient, and it can have a shuffling mechanism. Your mileage may vary in your country of origin. Here you can see the version 1 of the frame with that very, very large saw blade, which is actually a slitting saw. Um, you can see it kind of sweeps up to look very, very aggressive and it has absolutely no space inside. So this is why this frame was discontinued and I moved on to a similar design but with a lot more space. Um, the motors are just pressed into a tube at the back and they drive the legs which help it walk or waddle uh, just on an offset cam system. There are two 8mm ball bearings which everything runs on to keep it nice and smooth. Here is the new frame which is slightly whiter but more or less the same just more internal space. It is printed in ABS. As is traditional I ended up stripping parts out of the old frame and transplanting them into the new. The weapon motor is just a 21mm SK3 which is bolted in one side and then has a bearing support the other so it doesn't die. Just in case you weren't aware what a bearing is, uh, the whole assembly runs on a 2mm shaft which is a little thin but I've had no problem so far. There you can see the slitting saw and the printed hub which joins it to the outrunner. And here you can see the 3D printed cam that the bearings sit on. As it only has two legs, it isn't the smoothest step in the world, but it lets it jiggle along quite happily. The motors are just press fitted into place with a clearance for the gearbox. Here you can see a better motion of the legs as they ride around the central point on the bearings and kind of awkwardly hobble along. The bottom of these, the feet, is just some foam rubber which is glued on with super glue. The internal components for Shakma are fairly standard with an N20 gear motor, 250 milliamp hour lipo cells and a Melanchi Nano ESC. I got this from BBB, which came with some free sweeties. The weapon motor is an SK3 brushless outrunner, which is controlled by a King Kong branded 12 amp BL Heli ESC. If you weren't sure how the legs worked up until this point, this clip should make it pretty clear. With only two legs, as I've said before, it's a little unstable. The more legs you can add around a cam, generally the smoother it is and the closer it is to wheeled motion. Two is easy though, so I went with that. As you can see, it shuffles around rather merrily. Unfortunately, its mobility is rather limited, which is why its fights went mostly like this. Great. Moving on to a slightly more traditional robot, this is my horizontal bar spinner, Sad Ken. Uh, it's inspired heavily by the likes of Carbide, Decimator, and pretty much everything that spins horizontally. The lid 
is held on with M3 bolts and the whole chassis is a single printed piece of ABS. Through the medium of gentle stabbing the lid is removed and you'll be able to see that internally it's fairly sparse and standard. There is a 180 milliamp hour LiPo, uh, two cells powering two N20 gear motors which drive Lego tires and printed hubs. Located next to the battery is a charge point and on switch and hidden underneath is another Malenki Nano. Hidden underneath the robot in a slightly precarious position is the brushless ESC. This is another King Kong 12 amp ESC. There is a bearing press fitted into this brace which supports the whole weapon assembly. While looking rather pleasing and orange, Sad Kent's performance left a lot to be desired, being quickly outmaneuvered and outgunned by Expander Bot, it didn't have a chance to spin up its weapon and was quickly dumped outside. It did marginally better against this wedge bot. Uh, I was still having problems spinning up, but once it got up to speed it was okay, fending off, nice and controllable. Um, unfortunately, it kind of popped a last rights, skidding along the floor on its bar and dumping itself outside again. Bad loss. To end on a high note with Sad Ken, it did remarkably well surviving the Annihilator. It kept on going and was one of the last two remaining. It was limping towards the end as it lost the wheel, but I was able to keep manoeuvring and keep battering and buffering and absorbing damage relatively well. It just drove out the arena in the end. If you've seen my previous video on Reloader, you'll be very familiar with the internals. This is unchanged after that. Nice and manoeuvrable here, but unfortunately, in the fight, I suffered a dead cell, meaning it was really limping in performance before it was uh, unceremoniously turned off by one of the cluster bots it for. It was a bit of a damn squib. Unfortunately, after this bad loss, I drew Sad Ken and withdrew to let Sad Ken continue because I felt it had more to give. And it did. Now, to end on a slightly positive note, I'm going to have a look at the dark horse of my team, Hobgoblet. So named after my uh, entrant to BBC2 Robot Wars, Hobgoblin, this is a smaller version of the same beta style of robot. The egg beater weapon is a hand milled piece of 7075 aluminium powered by a small outrunner. The frame is 3D printed ABS with polycarbonate armour. Now, as you can see, this is quite a small robot, even for an amp weight and so it's pretty cramped inside. There are 250 milliamp hour lithium cells at the back with a charge port and switch, and the drive is two N20s. That mass of blue tape hides a Malenki Nano and an unnamed brushless ESC. The armor is polycarbonate with the spikes on the back to stop it resting. Unfortunately, it's quite stable on the front but the weapon should pop it over. Due to the higher speed motors and the large Lego tires, Hobgoblet is remarkably quick, which is a bit of a double-edged sword for me with my driving being fucking dreadful. In the end, I had to use dual rates to turn down the steering Otherwise, I would constantly oversteer, and with a gyroscopic weapon, I'd just flip myself over. One, two, one. 
In break with tradition, Todd Goblet did actually pretty well in the competition, facing off against a fast, low, controllable robot with a lot of drive power behind it. It was quickly able to uh, bash it around. I quickly found that having the weapon faster yielded greater hits. I was keeping it controllable and going for engagement, but more speed meant more bang, so I just went with it. It drove pretty well. This fight was quite worrying because of the size of the spinner I was facing. It was kind of 50-50 who was going to come out better in the hits, but because I was spinning upwards, I was able to knock him around a lot more. A lucky hit sent him out of the arena. This fight was worrying because I was facing another vertical spinner, a very controlled, very damaging Luckily, once he was upside down, I was able to get some knocks in and eventually just bat him out of the arena. This was a remarkable fight because I was able to absorb quite a lot of damage from another really nasty and a lot more balanced horizontal spinner. Unfortunately, the impacts were splitting my bulkheads apart, which was causing the weapon to drag on the floor. For a plain ABS robot, it was taking the damage quite well, and it was only a driving error that sent me out of the arena. Now in my final fight, I was unfortunately drawn against Limpet, which was driven by one of the best drivers in the sport, John Jr. I was able to hold off for a lot longer than I expected, even with a slightly gimpy weapon, but I was playing against the odds and I was again ducked out. Ultimately, this was an excellent run for Hobgoblet and I was really pleased with it coming joint ninth. Here you can see what I mean about the bulkhead splitting. This happened in the first fight and kept getting worse. Notice the dings on the beta as well. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments please let me know.